The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White, and we're very glad you joined us today. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Studio Arts and Glass, and as always, our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. In the studio with me is Brad White, compounding pharmacist, and our guest, very special guest, Dr. Natalie LaScala, podiatrist from Altman Hospital Medical Group. Good morning, Dr. LaScala, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Good morning. Most people recognize podiatry as the treatment of feet, although it's a diverse specialty that covers many aspects. In addition to general foot care, podiatrists specialize in foot and ankle trauma, reconstruction, sports medicine, and wound care. A focus of podiatry care includes diabetes-related foot care as well as prevention. Today we're going to explore treatments, conditions, and find out why feet are vulnerable. We'd like to remind you that our program is also available on our podcast, which can be downloaded from the App Store of your favorite smartphone. Look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, and you can listen to any of our programs anytime, anywhere. If you have questions you'd like addressed today, you can post them up on our live Facebook feed, or you can give us a call today at the radio station at 330-450-1480. So, we're glad you joined us this morning. Again, Doctor, please tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and your role at Altman Hospital. My name is Natalie Lascola. I am the podiatrist at Altman Hospital. I actually work at the Altman Medical Group. There's two of us that are there at the office, myself and Dr. Nafziger. We pretty much take care of all the foot and health care needs of our patients that come to us. We actually we both work in the wound center as well at the hospital. And... We accept, I mean, you don't have to be an Altman patient. You can, we accept any patients, but we take care of any any foot needs that come our way. Okay, so what role does a podiatrist play play in healthcare? Well, anything that deals with the foot, the leg, whether it's wound care, whether it's preventative care, preventing ulcerations, preventing trauma, preventing injuries, diabetic care, Hmm. diabetic care, or... Anything to bunions, hammer toes, biomechanical concerns, foot pain, heel pain, anything that can deal with the foot, we're open to. So what common complaints do people bring to you? Common complaints. The list is long, but generally we do see a lot of diabetic-related foot care needs, whether it's preventative care, routine exams just to make sure that nothing is going on to the latter end of wound care and preventative care with diabetics to prevent limb salvage and prevent amputations. We see skin conditions that occur, fungal nails, warts, ingrown nails, anything small in that aspect, but we also do surgeries and bunions and hammer toes, so the spectrum is broad. (laughs) It's pretty safe to say that that if your feet hurt, uh, the rest of your body sort of hurts. Is that correct? Yes. I was just talking about this yesterday with a patient who came in with an ingrown nail, otherwise healthy, young male, but he said that he was miserable. Every foot, every step that he took, he was miserable until Mm. we we could get this taken care of, and it is absolutely true because you're always on your feet. Anywhere you go, most people have to wear shoes to work, put your shoes on, Mm. your feet hurt. You feel miserable all day if your feet are bothering you. So that is absolutely right. I see people that come in with small ailments but are miserable because it's their feet, and you don't. It's really hard to give your feet a break. Doesn't doesn't a typical patient come to you with um, ingrown toenails, or, or, or older people in particular who really can't bend over, who can't, you know, raise their foot to cut it, trim mm-hmm. it, whatever. Is, is that the case? I have had patients tell me, I used to come with my mother or my grandmother, and I used to laugh and say I would never need this for myself, <laughs> but I got a hip replacement, and now I'm not allowed right, to bring yeah. my foot to my to my waist, or I'm, mm. I'm not, I have a back injury, and I can't bend over, or I have arthritis in my hands, and I'm not able to do it. So something as simple as cutting your toenails, you kind of take for granted. But yes, that is a service we provide. Even when there's not technically a problem with your feet or your toenails, mm. if you physically can't do it, that can become a problem. You know, um, 
feet get you there. You know, the, you have to have your feet in order to get around to walk around. Um, why are feet so vulnerable? Because exactly what you said. First step out of bed, you wake up, you stand up, you use your feet. Unless people take it for granted, you don't realize how much you use your feet until I make them stay off of their foot and they can't mm-hmm. imagine how they could possibly do anything without it. Some Something as simple as driving or going to the restroom, walking to the kitchen. You never mm-hmm. give your feet a break unless you are completely non-weight bearing and that's a really hard thing to do. So when we're dealing with foot pain, it's really hard that because we have to find that balance. I, I need to allow my patients to still be functional, but to take the pain away and try to treat their conditions. So how many people come to you? What percentage of people come to you with bad fitting shoes? Oh my goodness. Women in particular? With women, women in particular, and I'll have patients comment on my shoes. They'll say, I could never wear those shoes that you're wearing. And then I explain to them, <laughs> well, I'm not having any concerns or any foot pain. But I've had patients that have come to me with shoes that are ill-fitting, and they'll say to me in their description when I ask them questions, well, my feet don't hurt when I wear these shoes, but they hurt when I wear these shoes. And I say, you don't need a doctor. You you already know your answer. Don't wear the shoes. You already know your problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and you know the solution, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, let's talk a little bit about diabetes. Um, in the pharmacy, we see an awful lot of people with diabetes, and um, they have a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. So maybe you can help us um, give them some better guidance by telling our listeners about what effects diabetes can have on your feet. Okay, diabetes in your feet. The most important thing that I tell my patients that come in with diabetes for a routine foot check, I say, if you remember anything that I've told you today, I know we throw a lot of information at you. If I can stress anything to them, it's to protect your feet and to look at your feet. Those two things can really prevent a lot of problems. If you protect them, meaning don't go barefoot, don't walk around your house barefoot. Your We're feet not are, making any headway in that one. Exactly. <laughs> Even in your house, I encourage people to get a hard sole slipper, slipper. Something as simple as a, a glass that was broken in the kitchen three years mm-hmm. ago. Feet have a way of finding that tiny yeah. sliver or stubbing your toe on the coffee table or the nightstand. I deal with a lot of things like that. I've had somebody that had a non-healing wound on their foot. They're diabetic, had mm-hmm. poor circulation, stubbed their toe on the nightstand. The toenail came off and they had trouble healing that. Something wow. small can become a big deal. So protect your feet and look at your feet. If you see something on your foot that's not healing or looks odd or different or new, I always tell patients to call me. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. What about um, diabetic ulcers and how can you treat them? Diabetic ulcers. A lot of patients, when I they'll see on their chart or I'll refer to their wounds as ulcers, They get confused because a lot of people think of ulcers as like stomach or gastric problems. Mm -hmm. An ulcer is a non-healing wound on a diabetic limb. You don't have to be a diabetic as well. You can have an ulcer and not be a diabetic. But we refer to wounds that are having trouble healing on the bottom of the feet, on the sides of the feet, anywhere. It's an ulceration. It's a delay in healing, and there's multiple ways in treating them. And it's, it's a pretty complicated process, and it's usually a lengthy process. So that's why my goal is to try to prevent those because once we have an ulcer, you're typically being seen once a week for months sometimes and you're doing daily wound care dressings and it's a big deal. And it's expensive and inconvenient. It's very expensive. It's scary. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of of work that goes into trying to get those to go away. So you already mentioned a couple good tips about um, diabetic prevention or basically proper care for your feet. Always wear a shoe. Mm-hmm. Keep uh, be aware of what's going on with your feet. What about nail care? Because nail care is important too for your feet if you're a diabetic, right? Yes. Like I said, you don't technically have to have something wrong with your toenails to see a podiatrist. If you are not having your nails routinely trimmed, unfortunately, your nail does not care that it's part of you. It will grow into the side of your toenail, mm. into the side of your skin, and it can cause an infection. That simple infection can then turn into a non-healing wound and a lot of other problems. So something as simple as trimming your nails is a big deal. Now, a lot of patients will say, oh, my husband can do it or my daughter will do it. I've seen a lot of patients come in with chunks of flesh removed from the tips of their toes because they're trying to do it on their own. And I highly recommend if you're not, if your nails are thick, brittle, 
difficult to trim, just go to a podiatrist. They'll help you out. Hmm, very interesting. What about um, nerve damage with patients with diabetes, especially with your feet? Nerve damage with diabetes, the best thing you can do to prevent that is tight control of your blood sugars. Tight glycemic control is key to help preventing the neuropathy or the damage of the nerves. Once you have neuropathy, a lot of times there is not a cure. We cannot reverse it, so you are then on high alert. Hmm. Neuropathy does not give you a problem. It doesn't give you a wound. It doesn't give you an ulcer. But when you have neuropathy, you're not completely aware. I always tell patients you can see the problem before you feel it. So that's where it comes into that you need to look at your feet. Because if you can't feel a shoe that's rubbing causing a blister, or you can't feel a splinter in the bottom of your foot, you don't know that there's something to address. You don't know that there's a problem even starting. So it's important to protect them and look at them. Speaking of looking at your feet, um, you mentioned people that may have trouble with whether they have back pain or hip replacements. Mm -hmm. You can either, I'm guessing you could probably use a full-length mirror and sit in a chair and look at your feet in the mirror. Mm -hmm. That might be an easy way. You got another tip? I tell, well, they do make podiatry mirrors that are on a long handle that bend at a 90-degree angle. You can look at your look at your feet that way. I usually tell them to sit in a chair, look at the mirror. I said, get a mirror or get a friend. Yeah. Have a spouse or your daughter or your somebody that's helping you out. Just have them look. Something as simple as looking because you might not know that there's an issue underneath your foot until you look at it. Well, you need to look at the bottom of your foot, too. Mm-hmm. That's that's the most important, the bottom. The mirror on the floor. I tell them to look at the bottoms, look at the top, and look between the toes as well. Okay. Um, we got a minute left, I guess. You want to take the news, J.D.? Okay, we're going to take a break here a minute early. <laughs> You're listening to Health Matters at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Medicare Open Enrollment is going on now until December 7th, but selecting a plan can be confusing and stressful. That is why it is important to understand your options. We can help you figure out which plan is most economical for you. Call us and schedule an appointment to come in and have a free Medicare Part D plan consultation. Benefit from our pharmacist's knowledge, and you can save as much or more than $1,000 per year on your copays. Go to our website at medshoprx.com for more information. The Medicine Center Pharmacies, locally owned Health Mart Pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Caring for you and about you. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. Wendy here from Studio Arts and Glass. We're all decked out for our holiday open house going on now through Thanksgiving. A huge selection of hand-blown glass ornaments, unique jewelry handmade in the United States, glass icicles in all shapes and sizes, all at pre-season 20% discount going on now through Thanksgiving. Extended holiday hours, Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6, and Sunday, 11 to 5. Join us for our holiday open house at Studio Arts and Glass, Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. 
Hi, this is Brad White, your Medicine Center pharmacist. Are you paying big bucks for a little blue Viagra pill? There's a better alternative. Starting at only $4 per dose with a prescription from your doctor, the Medicine Center Pharmacy can prepare a Sildenafil or Tedenafil tablet that melts in your mouth for an affordable price. This allows you to take care of business and still have money left over for dinner and a movie. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has four locations in Stark and Tuscarawas counties. We're here to keep you healthy and save you money. Give us a call at 330-339-4466 for more information. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Today we're talking about foot care with podiatrist Dr. Natalie Lascala. Have a question, post it on our live Facebook feed. All right, so we were talking about diabetes and nerve damage. Is there anything else you want to add about diabetes care? Um, I think we covered most of it. Protect them and look at them. Protect them and look at them. All right. What about uh, plantar fasciitis? Um, we have patients that roll in and discuss great pain and what can they do, but I'm not sure they've called their podiatrist. So how do you know when you need to see a podiatrist for plantar fasciitis? And maybe we ought to talk about what it is first. Okay. The plantar fascia is on the bottom of the foot. It attaches to the heel, to the balls of the foot, and its job is to support the arch. When this area becomes irritated or inflamed, you have a lot of inflammation right where it inserts at the bone. That causes intense pain when you step down, pain after periods of rest, etc. When should you come in? I typically tell patients that if you've had plantar fasciitis for a month, it usually takes a month to get it to go away. If you've had it for six months, it might take six months to get it to go away. Hmm. Sometimes okay. it goes away very quickly. Sometimes it can really linger for longer than you want it to. So it's much easier to treat when the inflammation and the pain has not been lingering. I've had patients come in and say, it's been here for three years. And I say, well, what's changed now that you've... I just decided I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> but it's, it's a lot easier to treat because sometimes if you do some easy things at the very beginning, you can stop the whole snowball effect of the inflammation. The first two things that I tell patients to do is ice and stretch. I say, it's easy but annoying. You're going to ice it and you're going to stretch it. Hmm. Typical stretches that we have patients do is I always tell them you can remember to bring your toes to your nose. If you can hmm. recreate that position with your foot, toes to the nose and icing it. Sometimes doing those two things can avoid you needing to go to the doctor because sometimes hmm. it'll alleviate that discomfort. It's kind of it's kind of hard to say. Everybody's a little bit different. It depends on how severe it is. Hmm. You want to back up and hit this one question. What shoes should we wear? Now We're seeing women wearing shoes that they're feet are like straight down the toes are on the floor straight down what's up here now everybody's uh, trying to sell us the right shoe nobody nobody's gonna con try to convince <clears throat> you that those are the proper fitting shoes you're wearing those shoes for fashion everybody does it and it's fine on short short bits but i would not ever recommend somebody walk around in those <coughs> on a daily basis it's by biomechanically the foot's not sound in that position hmm. now what shoe should you wear that is going to be per patient basis. Everybody's foot type is a little bit different. You may have a low arch, a high arch, mm -hmm. a medium height arch. Everybody's foot is a little bit different. But on a basic rule of thumb, when you try on your shoes from the day that you leave the shoe store, you should they should be comfortable. They should not be rubbing. You should not need to break in your shoes. Mm -hmm. Your shoes should not break into your foot. Your foot should just fit comfortably. If it's a proper fitting shoe, you shouldn't have to break it in. A lot of patients will say, oh, they'll stretch, or I'll push it. This, they'll be red for a little while, but they'll stretch out. You should never have to break in a shoe. So typically, as long as your shoe is comfortable, most of the time it's not causing damage. If, if it's comfortable, it's doing, it's doing its job. I see so many men with with a shoe wearing shoes that are real like a pointed toe, mm -hmm. which to me just crushes your you know your toes together. Uh, I would think that is not good um, or comfortable in any way whatsoever. No, no. I I typically recommend shoes with extra width and extra depth in the toe box. Now the toe box meaning the forefront of the shoe where your toes would be fitting. You don't want your shoes to rub on the top of the toes, and you also don't want your shoes to squeeze the toes. When you squeeze the toes together, we get a lot of conditions of lesions in between the toes, kind of sure. from the joints rubbing. And if they're rubbing on the top of the toes, if you have any conditions like hammer toes or a joint contracture, 
you're going to have a sore on top of the toe. So we just want to avoid any pressure or friction. So how about let's move over and talk about bunions and hammer toes? <clears throat> you're on. Okay, bunions, <laughs> bunions and hammer toes. We could go on for we could go on for hours about bunions and hammer toes. They're very complex deformity. There are many small bones and ligaments in the foot and when you're dealing with a bunion and a hammer toe you're dealing with very small ligaments that have kind of lost their elasticity or lost their mechanical pull so to fix a bunion to fix a hammer toe to actually correct it you have to do surgery because it's a bony deformity now there are bunion splints there are hammer toe splints strappings sometimes those will delay the progression of your deformity but there's no correction unless you do surgery. So I have patients that say, can I wear this splint? Will this fix my bunion? If, it, if your bunion is flexible and you wear that splint every day, sure, it's going to avoid rubbing, it's going to avoid pain, and there's no harm in wearing them. But your bunion's still going to be there when you take off that splint. I want to put this question in. I don't think it's on a script, but... Um you know, you go to the drugstore or whatever store and got all kinds of foot sanders, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, that you're supposed to sand the dead skin off your, mm-hmm. sand your corns or whatever. Good, bad. It's good as long as you are not drawing blood. If I usually tell patients that have neuropathy or a diabetic that they shouldn't do it because okay. they may not know. Yeah, I can't feel it. They can't feel if they're mm-hmm. going too deep or being too rough. So I usually tell them not to. But... Well, as a basic rule of thumb, exfoliating that dead skin is it can prevent fissures and cracks, especially in the winter months. So lotion and exfoliating is fine. It's just you don't want to go too deep. You don't want to draw blood. If you're if you're the, causing pain, it's a little too deep. Is a bunion or, or a hammer toe? Is it is it due to uh, poor shoes or, or, or what do we got going? You here? can create a deformity by ill fit, ill fitting shoes. But 90% of the time, 90% of the patients that come in with a bunion or a hammer toe, it's genetics. Mm-hmm. Amazing. So what, how do we prevent this stuff? I mean, we can't be perfect. We're working. We're standing all day, you know, most of us, you know, in our work site. Um, I guess shoes are number one, the proper mm-hmm. shoe. But, but what's the next move here? Are, can we soak our feet every night, or what do we do here? No, I don't. If you're diabetic, I don't recommend soaking your feet just because the warm water can dry out the skin. So diabetics, I don't recommend soaking the feet, especially if you have any sores or wounds. But I think mostly you just need to protect them. And you can have a bunion. You can have a hammer toe. Your feet can be cosmetically, in your opinion, unattractive. And if they get you to point A to point B and they're not causing you pain, they're not giving you sores, then that's a success. It's fine. Nobody's feet are perfect, and you're never going to have perfect. But if they function and you're not in pain, it's a win. Okay. Mm-hmm. It is the bottom of the hour. Time for the news. Thanks for joining us this morning on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. We understand the one-size-fits-all approach doesn't always work. We do customized compounded medications based on your doctor's prescription to match your specific needs. Hi, I'm your pharmacist, Brad White, from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Do you use or need customized compounded prescription medications because of allergies, special formulations, or need an easier way to take your medication that isn't available? Many physicians choose to prescribe a medication that is not commercially made and requires a pharmacy like ours with special equipment and training to prepare a capsule, suspension, cream, or tablet. Are you sensitive to lactose, dyes, or need a sugar-free suspension? The Medicine Center Pharmacy is here to help you. Every day we prepare custom medications for infants, adults, and pets in our PCAB accredited compounding lab. Call or stop by the Medicine Center Pharmacy today at 551 West High Avenue in New Philadelphia, where wellness begins.
Medicare open enrollment is going on now until December 7th, but selecting a plan can be confusing and stressful. That is why it is important to understand your options. We can help you figure out which plan is most economical for you. Call us and schedule an appointment to come in and have a free Medicare Part D plan consultation. Benefit from our pharmacist's knowledge, and you can save as much or more than $1,000 per year on your co-pays. Go to our website at medshoprx.com for more information. The Medicine Center Pharmacies, locally owned Health Mart Pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Caring for you and about you. Wendy here from Studio Arts and Glass. We're all decked out for our holiday open house going on now through Thanksgiving. A huge selection of hand-blown glass ornaments, unique jewelry handmade in the United States, glass icicles in all shapes and sizes, all at pre-season 20% discount going on now through Thanksgiving. Extended holiday hours, Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6, and Sunday, 11 to 5. Join us for our holiday open house at Studio Arts and Glass, Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Hi, this is Brad White, your Medicine Center pharmacist. Are you paying big bucks for a little blue Viagra pill? There's a better alternative. Starting at only $4 per dose with a prescription from your doctor, the Medicine Center Pharmacy can prepare a Sildenafil or Tedenafil tablet that melts in your mouth for an affordable price. This allows you to take care of business and still have money left over for dinner and a movie. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has four locations in Stark and Tuscarawas counties. We're here to keep you healthy and save you money. Give us a call at 330-339-4466 for more information. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. Today we're talking about foot care with podiatrist Dr. Natalie Lascola from Altman Medical Group. We've got a lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. All right, we talked about uh, bunions and hammer toes before the break. Uh, Did we talk much about treatment yet? What do we do? I mentioned wearing the proper fitting shoes and there's certain types of splints that you can use to protect them pad them protect them if you're preventing sores on them we're it's okay i usually tell patients that it, it's time for surgery when they're it's affecting their daily lifestyle the pain is so great that it's they can't do the things that they would like to do they can't fit in regular shoes or they have open sores because of the deformities those are the three things so if it's affecting your life you can't fit in shoes, and you have an open sore. Those are all three really good reasons to consider surgical correction. If you just have a bunion and there's a bump on the side of your toe and your toe may not look cosmetically the way you would like it, but it doesn't hurt, I don't recommend surgery. So surgery is not mandatory nope. to live No, I always tell people you can live a long, healthy, happy life with a bunion. We need to do something about it, when it if it causes a problem. We had a pharmacist working for us years ago, and she had bunions on both feet. It was a young woman. And um, she had one of them removed, and she said, I'll never have the other one taken off. What's going on here? Sometimes patients will have surgery for the wrong reasons. Like I said, if it, they weren't really, if the, even though the bunion's there, if it wasn't technically extremely painful prior to surgery, after surgery, it's going to be painful. It is foot surgery. It's not something to step into lightly. A lot of patients think, oh, it's just small little bunion surgery or a foot surgery. It is a big deal. It is It is painful. And it's nothing that you can't handle. But patients that are in pain preoperatively, they do excellent post-op. But it's the patients that maybe they were having surgery because they didn't like the way their foot looked. They're not always ready for that intense pain that happens after a surgery. Describe a bunion. What's it look like? What does it look like? Yeah, where is it? Anywhere on the foot, bottom, top, toes? The big toe. The side bump on the side of the big toe. Right, what People refer to it as the ball of the foot. Okay. That's actually the metatarsal head that's sliding over and it's protruding out because it's lost its natural position in the foot. And it's swinging out to the side. So it's swinging towards the inside of your body. So why do they call a hammer toe a hammer toe? Looks like a hammer? <laughs> well, the toe can curl up and actually almost look like a hammer. It can have a, a sharp bend in it. It can look like a hammer. Turn, turn up, you mean, at the, at the joint around the... It, can, it contracts at each joint of the small toes, almost as if the, you were curling your toes into a fist. 
Now, do we operate on those? Is that, yes. That has to be, right? Yeah. Well, you don't have to. Like I said, you do not have to operate on a hammer toe. I have many patients that have hammer toes, and I don't look at their feet and say, oh, you have a hammer toe, let's schedule surgery. <laughs> I say, okay, you have a hammer toe. What can we do to prevent any sores, prevent any pain? And as long as we do that, we don't do surgery. But if it is painful, then, of course, we'll consider it. Okay. We can't get in a shoe, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you know, well, so, so they do make shoes that have extra depth and extra width. That's sure. the literally that's the definition of a diabetic shoe. I see. Patients will ask, "What's so special about a diabetic shoe?" They'll have extra depth, extra width. Sort so of a boxy look. Mm-hmm. On the front. Yeah. Okay. Just so there's not rubbing of the toes. Okay. Hmm. What about? Um, I mean, we talk about that. What about some common arthroplasty sur- procedures? Uh, what is that word? <laughs> Fancy question, huh? An yeah. arthroplasty, that question is pertaining to hammer toes. Oh, okay. An arthroplasty is the surgical correction of a hammer toe. Now, arthroplasty is when you simply remove the, the joint. You're taking a portion of that bone out, mm-hmm. and the toe, it releases the contracture, and the toe can then allow, it's allowed to sit straight as it normally would, as if it wouldn't have a bunion or a hammer toe. I guess I've always heard that the, that the toes on your feet are one of the major points of balance, okay? And, okay, so you, let's say you take the big toe, you take it off, or you whatever. What happens to the balance? Does the person have to relearn how to walk? Patients don't have to relearn how to walk when they lose their great toe. Now, it would be a lie to say that it isn't affected some, because the great toe... The big toe is the one that is probably the most beneficial for balance and propulsion while we're walking in a forward motion. You can lose your great toe and still walk in a perfect manner, but the truth is some of the pressures that would be going to the great toe kind of get dissipated to the lesser toes Mm. and makes them a little vulnerable. So you can walk functionally without, if you happen to to have an amputation of your great toe, you can function, you can walk perfectly. But... There are some slight changes that are made. Okay. Okay, well, we had a question from Bernie in Canton, and he wants us to talk about calluses on your feet. So how do we get them, and what do we do if they're problematic? Calluses are are a result of friction or pressure. At first, your body is trying to form this callus to protect itself. And then if the callus then continues to progress, it then can pose a threat. I usually tell patients that if they see bleeding or color changes within their calluses, they are at a risk for an ulcer. So, Bernie, if your callus is changing colors, if there's blood underneath the skin, if it looks like a bruise underneath your skin, then you should consider making an appointment with a podiatrist just because you could have an open sore underlying that callus, Mm -hmm. almost like a rock being duct taped to the bottom of your foot. And if you leave that rock there for too long, when you take that piece of duct tape off, there's going to be a sore. Mm. So that callus can mimic to what a little pebble or a stone would do. Mm. So if you see any skin changes, now some calluses are just harder skin, firm skin, runners have them, athletes have them. Those are more protective. Those are okay. But if you have a a nucleated cork-like callus on your foot and you're noticing color changes, those are, you're at a risk for an open sore. So I would get that looked at. What about um, new technologies or new procedures or new new things that you can use to help patients that you didn't have a couple of years ago that you're excited about or new research that's out there? Anything that's, um, that's coming down the pipeline, if you will? Not necessarily that it's new, but... It's been around for a while, but it's becoming more, more patients are understanding it and being open to, I would think, hyperbaric oxygen therapy for wound care. Mm. It's been around for a while, and it's not a new type of therapy, but more patients are being open to trying it. What it is, it is concentrated oxygen, and you literally are in a tank. When patients look at that, some, if they have issues with claustrophobia, they don't want to do this. This is good for patients with wound care and chronic wounds that won't heal. We've been seeing a lot of more patients that are willing to commit to hyperbaric oxygen therapy because it will increase wound healing times, and it can help prevent amputations. So a lot of patients, I mean, that's a pretty innovative and neat treatment for patients with wounds. What topical antifungals do you recommend? What topical antifungals yeah. do I recommend? I mean, we got undecided. Undis- 
still named De- oh, Desnex. We got uh, Tenactin, which was developed by the Japanese for Jungle Rot. Uh, and then we've got some of the later products out there. W- what's the scoop here? Well, a lot of the antifungals, if they're cream-based, I don't like to give them to patients if they go in between the toes. Right. So a lot of if you have athlete's foot or tinea between your toes, I like to use a gel-based product. Okay. And those historically have been expensive for patients to mm-hmm. get. Sometimes they're hard to get coverage for. Mm-hmm. I'm not exactly sure why, but a lot of the gel-based mm-hmm. products have been more expensive. There are some tried-and-true creams, Lamisil, Terbinafine. Mm-hmm. I, I've been using certain topicals lately. I've been using Alcortin A. It is able to be placed between the toes. So it depends on what type of fungus they have. If it's just a cream, I can give a generic, but it gets tricky when it's between the toes because I don't want to increase the maceration between the toes. Should we should we use foot powder every day? Not necessarily. Not yeah. everybody. I mean, I don't typically tell my patients to make sure you use your foot powder. Some patients do, and it's yeah. perfectly fine. But if you have a wound or open sores or it's not a not a good idea to mm-hmm. apply a talc or a powder to them but some patients find comfort in using the antifungal powders and it's okay what about nail fungus nail fungus that is the topic of everybody's yeah. desires it's very hard to treat it is i have to be honest it's a very tricky condition to treat the sooner you treat it the better patients that have had fungal nails for years and years and the nail has already been damaged, it's very, very hard to get that nail pill to then change. The sooner we start, the quicker response we can get. And typically, it takes about a year because it Mm -hmm. takes 9 to 12 months on average for your toenails to grow back. Mm -hmm. So if you have a fungal nail, the nail that we're looking at doesn't change. We're looking for the new nail that grows in Mm -hmm. to grow back non-fungal as we're treating it. use a lot of topicals. Topicals are safe. You don't need to have the blood work and the liver panels. If you're doing oral antifungals, that's where we make sure that we're not damaging your liver throughout the treatment. But Mm. it is a very tricky, tricky condition to treat. It's hard to get a response. I had a lady come in several years ago, and she said, Paul, she was almost in tears. She said, look at this. She had worn, was wearing false fingernails for Mm -hmm. years. And her real fingernails were just destroyed by fungus. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow, what do you what 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 can I do for that, Paul? <laughs> These are really gone. I mean, her nails are gone. Exactly. It's it's it takes a while, and most patients, once I tell them, like if they're going to try topical, when I tell them you're going to be applying something every day to your nails for approximately one year, they say yeah. forget it. We don't. Yeah. But it's some, a lot of yeah, it's it's <clears throat> a lot of discipline. It takes. It can be very annoying, but it can work, and I have seen it work. But I've also seen it not work. So. Yeah. Wow. Sometimes just routine de- debridements. When they're really bad, I'll just have my patients come in. I'll debride their nails. I'll trim mm-hmm. them. I'll file them and keep the nail as thin as possible just for comfort. And it does help with the cosmetic appearance as well. But mm-hmm. I usually say they're never going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Well, this lady was in, almost in tears. I mean, she re- really took, over the years, I always noticed her hands were mm-hmm. just perfect. The nail polish was perfect and you know, that sort of thing. But it does take, there's no... The nails are de- is it are the nails dead tissue? There's no blood circulation in them, or, or there is, or well, the nails are technically kind of like our hair. You know, mm-hmm. at the root, there's sensation. Like you know, if you pull your hair out, that causes pain. The same mm-hmm. as with your nails. Your nails are adhered to your nail bed underneath, but as they grow out, they're they're keratin based, and mm-hmm. you don't have sensations within the nail itself. So they're not dead, but they have a blood supply from the root where they're growing from very very uh, difficult extremely difficult to get any med meds mm-hmm. in well the oral medications do work through the blood supply at yeah. the root where the new nail is but forming but they still take many months mm-hmm. yes it doesn't matter which which route you're taking whether you're taking oral antifungals or topical it's still going to take nine to twelve months to get your to to know did this work and then mm-hmm. it can come back. Mm-hmm. It, uh, we know you're susceptible to it because mm-hmm. you've had it once. And I hate to tell it to everybody, but it's everywhere. It's yeah. a very common common occurrence. It's sure. not hard. It has nothing to do with your hygiene. It has nothing to do with your health. It has everything to do with susceptibility. Hmm. Interesting. 
Well, I guess we should take our last break here. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. The warmer weather is here. Hi, this is Brad White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Perhaps you've gotten the urge to venture outside and clean up the garage or do some yard work, resulting in muscle aches and pains. If you have sore muscles or aching joints, you may want to consider a prescription pain-relieving cream available with a prescription at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Our pharmacists can work with you and your physician to get topical pain creams that can be rubbed directly on the source, reducing inflammation and pain. Topical creams avoid troublesome side effects and dependency issues that can be caused by oral medications. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has an accredited compounding laboratory, and it is your source for custom medications. Custom compounded pain-relieving creams, available only at the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where wellness begins. Visit us at MedShopRx.com for the pharmacy nearest you. That's MedShopRx.com. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. It's that time of the year again. It's time to protect your family against the flu virus. Hi, this is pharmacist Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Flu vaccination should be a priority to you and your family. So take the steps today to protect yourself. Visit us at any Medicine Center Pharmacy and get your flu shot. And don't forget to stock up on items to boost your immune system like probiotics and multivitamins. Medicine Center Pharmacies are conveniently located in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Today we are talking with Dr. Natalie Lascola from Altman Medical Group. All right. Well, before we get too much farther, we probably ought to talk about um, how do our listeners contact a podiatrist and where can they find you if they're interested in getting their feet checked out and some of the topics we've talked about today. Okay. I am located at the Altman Medical Group. We are located directly behind Altman North's facility. My office number is 330-433-1258. That's our direct line to podiatry, and you can call and make an appointment. We're accepting new patients, and we'd be happy to see you. As far as common practice, you know, we often talk about a good standard of care. So, you know, it's a good idea to see your medical doctor once a year for a physical how about a podiatrist i know it's at least once a year for a diabetes patient Mm -hmm. correct yes or more my diabetic patients that don't have very few health risks for their feet i will say once a year is sufficient now i very rarely have patients that come once a year because most of my diabetic patients come in every three months for routine nail debridement now at that visit it's a pretty quick visit I will visually inspect the feet and check everything out and debride the nails. Usually every six months to a year, we'll do a full diabetic foot exam just to stay on top of it. But usually it's not always necessary because if I'm seeing them every three months, I get a pretty good feel on what I'm looking at and I can notice changes very quickly. 
So it's actually very beneficial. So as far as a diabetic, those are really the only patients that I have that I recommend coming back on a routine interval. Most of my patients are as needed because if you're not having, if your foot pain resolves, we do surgery, it's better. I say, you're good to go. Call me if it bothers you. So a lot of my patients are on an as-needed basis, but my diabetics come in routinely. Okay. We sell a boatload of Epsom salts. Okay. People suck their feet in Epsom salt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> any any value in this? <laughs> People always ask me, is it okay if I'm using my Epsom salts? I After, for example, say I remove an ingrown toenail, okay. I have a list and I encourage them to soak because it's very important for their healing after sure. nail removal. And I, I list Epsom salts, Dreft detergent, dilute mm, soap, wow. dilute white vinegar. There's multiple ways that you can soak mm. your feet and most of them are all just fine epsom salts perfectly fine if that's what you want to soak in them mm. and i usually tell patients if you like it and it's comforting to you, you feel better yeah by sure. all means do it okay <laughs> it just it's amazing how much we sell i mm-hmm. just big containers people bathe in it i <laughs> it's just nuts <laughs> so anyway um other other podiatrists in your practice yes there's one dr nafziger um he is credentials just as myself he also works in the wound center and he's also accepting patients okay typically if i'm not in the office ben is so even when i'm not there on certain days we kind of it works out well because we can have the cross coverage of our patients so if i'm not available he is so does does laser technology fit in the foot care surgery uh whatever whatever when i personally don't do a lot of laser care i did in residency for mainly wart removals Mm -hmm. and i did use them on fungal nails now Mm -hmm. typically the laser treatment for fungal nails it's a cash pay option and only select podiatrist or physicians do this Mm -hmm. it's you have to uh, physically own or possess the laser you either buy it or rent it and i don't have one at my facility and success rates go both ways so it's it's not something i looked into to pursue with my practice but a lot of podiatrists there are some out there i know that there is somebody in the akron area that will treat toenail fungus with the laser but it is a cash pay option effective i have seen it work i have but i there's not a reimbursement if it doesn't okay i guess what i was thinking was was uh, laser technology for possibly um cutting away the toenail that's so bad or or that sort of thing not necessarily no a lot of times it's just a surgical excision okay i don't i don't use a a a laser for that we'll just do a surgical removal of the nail Okay. all right we have about three minutes left um what's new on the scene i mean is there anything new in foot care or uh any technology or or you know so many so many things have become like robotic surgery and things like so many things have become i think revolutionary so what do you got for us anything as far as robotic surgery we have some you know cannulated with uh, camera surgeries Mm -hmm. that we do with the ankle and the foot but put me on the spot i can't think of any new robots that come in and <laughs> do anything for the foot i just it's just you know you, uh, lasering you know cataracts all that all, mm-hmm. that, all that stuff that, that that you know we didn't have a few years there's ago. always new surgical instruments for wound care and debridement and new innovative techniques for surgery there's the list is long there's always something new coming out but it's usually based off of a tried and true procedure that we've done for years so Okay. Whether it's new itself, there's new instrumentation, yes, but most of them are tried and true. What about any treatments that, the, that podiatrist, podiatrists might do above the ankle, on the lower leg? Any? Yes, we work on the Achilles tendon, the mm-hmm. largest tendon mm-hmm. okay. that goes into the foot and the ankle. If there's mm-hmm. issues with that, yes, we can address that, as well as wounds on the lower extremity. As long as wounds on the leg... We address those as well. Now, if it's a tendon or a joint that's associated with the knee, you would go to an orthopedic that would specialize with the knee, but the foot and ankle. And not all podiatrists do treat the ankle as well. So it's just important to ask your podiatrist what they're trained in and what their specifics are. Okay. Give us your phone number again. 330-433-1258. Okay. 
We are at the just about the end of the show. Thanks, Dr. Natalie Oscola from Altman Medical Group, podiatrist. We'd like to remind our listeners, if you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your health care provider. A special thank you to our sponsors, Studio Arts and Glass. And I believe they have a big event this weekend coming up. Um, so check in with uh, Wendy Joliet at Studio Arts and Glass. And we thank our producer, J.D. DeAngelis. As always, thank you, listeners, for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Have a healthy week. Nice weekend. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacists, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The preceding program was sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies.